I am really curious about something and that's why I'm making this video because I want to know. So I want you to look at this book. Let's just look at it and just look at it and keep an open mind. University College Nottingham Mathematical Department Library and it says Vector Algebra and Trigonometry. It's by Hayward. Got the uh, thing from the library. I always have that so that they can organize the books. Here it says University of Nottingham Science Library. I don't know if we can make that out. Yeah, University of Nottingham Science Library. And here it says, once again, University of Nottingham Science Library. So when I saw this book, <laughs> I thought, oh no, oh no, what is going on here? And I'm wondering if you had the same thoughts I had. So my thoughts were, this is a book that someone checked out from the library and they never returned it. I mean, look how official that looks. That, I'm pretty sure this is from University College Nottingham and it still has, it still has that, you know, and that's usually something you only see on library books. So then I opened it up and I saw this, it says due date for a return. And then it took me a minute, but here's the relief I got. It says withdrawn. See that? Withdrawn. So it's been withdrawn from the library. So this is an X library book, EX library, but it has been withdrawn. I just, when I, when I first saw it, I thought, oh no. <laughs> so I'm wondering, did you have the same feeling? Like, did you think, hey, that's an overdue library book? But I don't know. I It, it kind of bothered me. I thought, no, someone took this precious book and I didn't notice it until I opened it up further. You know, look, 1892. The Algebra of Coplanar Vectors and Trigonometry by Richard Baldwin Hayward, MAFRS. Wow. Senior Mathematical Master in Harrow School, Formula Fellow of St. John's College, Cambridge. This is really cool. What's this? To the memory of Augustus de Morgan. Wow. That's the same Augustus from De Morgan's Laws that you learn. Formerly professor of mathematics in University College London, to the spirit of whose teaching and writings the author once his pupil would ascribe. Wow. So this is a student of Augustus De Morgan who wrote this book. Whatever of merit is to be found in the following pages. Wow, I'm getting goosebumps on it. I've spent uh, the last uh, three days doing a lot of math, so... I thought I would take a break and make a video. Look, let's go to the contents and see if we can find the contents and we can look at that together. But yeah, wow, what a shock. <laughs> I was just thinking like, this is a really big late fee from 1892. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, how much money would you owe? It's a math problem, right? How much money do you owe in library fees? You know, if you, if you checked it out when it was new and never returned it. <laughs> so probably millions of dollars, you know, if you compound the interest. So let's look at the contents. Uh, plan of work, the fundamental laws of algebra. Ooh, the laws true for ratios and or continuous number. The complex number a plus b times the square root of negative one, impossible in the algebra of pure number or ratio. Yes, yes. Summary of principles, scalar algebra linear. May not the complex number find an interpretation in planar or two-dimensional space? Question mark. Vectors and vector aggregation. It's just basic vector stuff, stuff you've probably seen. Right? Most people study vectors, which is kind of cool. So, you know, you've got some math in this book that you, you know, I have to smell it. I'm sorry. I just have to take it away from the camera just to, oh, uh, oh, uh, this is one of my older books. I have a lot of old books. Some are too old, almost too, to, to, to film because they're falling apart. So I should make a video with my oldest books. More stuff with vectors. Vector division. Uniqueness of I. Trigonometrical ratios. Definitions of the trigonometrical ratios. The fundamental equation, I to the U equals cosine U plus I sine U. Fundamental relations of the six ratios. Ratios in terms of versors. Some interesting language, right? They have interesting language in some old books. I have one of De Morgan's books. I actually have a book written by De Morgan, and the language is really, really old school. It's like really like old English, 
very like yeah they use words that are very hard to understand it will be shun that would say shun instead of shown vector indices and logarithms Oh, well, there's the limit of sine u over u on number four when u vanishes. Yeah, that's a limit you study in calculus one. Some stuff with logarithms. Cool. In the page. Really cool, right? I love these old books. I can just look at these all night. Hyperbolic geometry. That's pretty cool. I got some hyperbolic geometry. Roots of unity. A lot of interesting topics in this book. Like most, you can't really find a newer book that you know compares exactly. I mean, it's it's a little bit different. There's just a bunch of topics that you won't find in books today, all in one place. Infinite series in general. So it has infinite series in it. Expansions and summations. Almost done with the contents. Then we'll look at some of the math. Series for sine theta, cosine theta, sinh theta, cosinh theta. Wow. Bernoulli's numbers. There's a lot of math in this little book, right? I mean, this is this is pretty intense. Series of factors. And, you know, even though it's an old book, I, I like, so far, it's the typesetting is pretty good. I, I have some old books where it's like, they're so small. Like, the typesetting is so small. I have a couple like that, and I don't know what the deal is. Um, I think a lot of those are also, like, from England. And for some, there must have been a period there where they decided to write extra small in math books. That's <laughs> just... Let's skip ahead because most of this stuff um, you're probably familiar with. It just depends where you are in your math journey. Uh, but I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of people who are watching this video already know a lot of this math. And some people might not know any of it. So the important thing is that you're here and you're learning. Let's, uh, let's look at something else. Let's see. Trigonometric ratios. What else do we have? Hyperbolic geometry. Roots of unity. Convergency and divergency. Look at that. That looks fun. Infinite stuff. Infinite series. Yeah, wow. Infinite series. Roots of unity. I think they talked about infinite series here. Let's look at the infinite series stuff. Infinite series, convergency, and divergency. Interesting. Let's, let's read this together. Before proceeding to those developments of our subject, in which the free use of infinite series is required, it is necessary to consider in some detail the general character of algebraical series, whether having a finite or an infinite number of terms, in light of vector algebra and especially with reference to the question of their convergency or divergency. Hmm. But here it talks about series. But here we go, convergency and divergency. Let's see if we can actually find some examples. Here we go, here's some examples. Look at this one. Looks interesting. The following example adapted from one given by Stokes. Wow. Wow, given by Stokes. will illustrate the argument of this article. Okay, so we have the sum. They may be put into forms. Whence it is seen that their sums to n terms are respectively 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 and 1 minus 1 over 1 plus nx. And their sums ad infinitum are each one as long as x differs by however small a quantity from zero. Wow. Very different. You know, no modern math book is going to read like that. It's, it's going to read a little bit differently. It's going to have some inequalities. Um, just the language in these old books. And it's, it's good and it's bad. Sometimes it's like, sometimes you appreciate it because it's so different, you know, and it just gives you a different perspective. Because if you buy like you know, if I, if I go look at, you know, three modern calculus books and I compare them, they're going to be pretty close. The examples might be different. The exercises might be different. And certain things will be presented in different ways. You know, a certain book might present certain formulas a better way than another book. But this is completely different from, you know, a modern book. Yeah, cool. That was really cool. Really nice book. I'll try to find this book, by the way. I don't think I'll be able to find it. But check the description. If I can find it, I'll put a link. A lot of times with these old books... When I find them on the internet, there's only a few copies. So uh, usually, I mean, if I can find them, because they're out of print, uh, unless it's been reprinted, which is kind of cool. Here we have some series here. Cool. You know, we've got some infinite series here. Those are really important. Cosine z and sine z. You know how to memorize those. I'll show you how to memorize those, actually. So check this out. So cosine z, 
Cosine is an even function, right? So it has only even powers in its series expansion. And sine z is an odd function, so it has only odd powers, right? So easy way to memorize it. And so if you don't know where to start, just think, okay, for cosine z, you know, what's, what's the first, you know, even number? Zero, z to the zero. So zero, two, four, six. And then um, for sine z, the first odd number is one, right? So it'll be z to the one. Very useful for differential equations and other math to uh, know those. Series deduced from the logarithmic series for arctangent, or tan inverse and arctanch. Wow. Right, really specific stuff. It, it, and I say that just because I'm comparing it to modern books, right? At the time, this was, you know, what was studied. There's just so much mathematics out there that, you know, nobody knows it all. Nobody, nobody knows it all. That's the thing I like about collecting math books. Every time you get a new book, you, you get some new math that you can learn. Oh, look at these. Prove the following summations to n terms. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Really intense. I don't think this book has answers. I didn't see answers in the, um, in the contents. Let's check. Pretty sure it doesn't. A lot of times these old um, British books do have answers. That's something that a lot of the old books um, from, from this era have, and that makes them really good. I don't know if this one does. It doesn't say it does. It doesn't say it does. But sometimes older books, they don't have, they don't have an index or anything. They don't say anything. So let's see. Yeah, no, it doesn't, it doesn't have anything. It doesn't have any answers. Or I don't even think it has exercises, does it? Let's see. Does the book even have exercises? I think this book is just, you know, it's one of those older books where it's just like, it just goes through the content. You know, there's no exercises. There's no solutions. Um, oh, no, it does have, it has examples. It has examples, yeah. But it doesn't have solutions to the examples. It calls them examples. It doesn't call them exercises. That's interesting. Huh. Interesting. But there's no, there's no solutions. So. Anyways, I just wanted to show you this book because um, when I first saw it, I, uh, I, I was really like, oh, no, like, I have stolen property. Like, this is, you know, um, this, is, this is a cool book, right? University College, Nottingham, Mathematical Department, Library, Math Department Libraries. I've never been to one that wasn't like, it didn't have like an underground feeling. If, you, if, you know, if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> Vector Algebra and Trigonometry by Hayward. What a fun book. Just fun to collect old books. Anyways, I just thought I would share this because I had a moment with this book. I thought, no, no, someone didn't return it. What's the late fee from 1892? You know, assuming they took it out then. Until next time, take care and good luck.